Hi, we're Team Lab Genius, and we've been looking at ways to improve how data is stored, organized, and shared by researchers. The economics paper Growth in a Time of Debt was published in 2010 and was cited as evidence in a US budget proposal, as well as by policymakers in Britain and the EU. A graduate student named Thomas Herndon decided to try and reproduce the results of this paper for a class assignment. After failing to reproduce the results, he sent repeated requests to the authors for the raw data. He finally received the files and found several errors, including coding errors in the Excel macros used to calculate the figures shown in the paper. These findings were finally published in 2013, three years after the paper had been originally published and only after it had been cited over 100 times. Now, the point of this story isn't to demonize the publishers of this paper. Rather, it's a reminder that even at the most elite levels, research is a messy business and that it can have real effects on the world. If Herndon's request for the original data files had simply been ignored, how many policies would have been influenced by a mistake in an Excel macro? How many more papers would have been published citing growth in a time of debt as a source? We want to make sharing the raw data from scientific research standard practice. We know that researchers are busy people and want to make this process as fast and as simple for them as possible. We believe that by sharing data in an easily accessible place will not only help catch mistakes, but also increase the quality and pace of research by facilitating cross-discipline study. We also hope that providing a central place to look at full scientific projects will be an immense help to students in the sciences and help improve scientific literacy in general. Now, for these ideas to be realized, we need enough researchers using common software and data practices for it to become the new standard. How can we accomplish this? We must create something that benefits researchers and their labs so much that they can't afford not to use it. When we started the Ignite program, we thought that by giving researchers smart pens, pens that write in ink but store the data digitally, we would create something of immediate benefit. After interviewing researchers, however, we found that getting their physical lab notebook into a digital format was low priority for them. We also talked to people already using electronic lab notebook software to store their data centrally and found that while most people were okay with using it, there was little enthusiasm about it. This led us to the conclusion that just adding smart pins or creating electronic lab notebook software wouldn't be of enough day-to-day -day benefit to entice researchers into good data storage practice. Rather, they were just part of the equation that would result in something convincing enough to drive adoption. During our time at Ignite, we focused on three primary areas of investigation. We wanted to give smart pins to researchers to see if their benefits outweighed the problems they created. We want to create a software prototype based on our initial interviews with researchers, and we want to continue talking to researchers throughout to discover the types of data issues that affected them the most. We gave 10 researchers smart pins to keep their lab notebook for a week. The responses we got were mostly positive. We generated enough interest from the NAH working group that they'll be moving forward with a large-scale test involving multiple labs. From the initial interviews we conducted, we found that poor communication between scientists was a potential common problem area. Additionally, this communication was being lost in a series of emails rather than being associated with the research project it was related to. We created a software prototype that not only was capable of storing scientific data organized by project, but also had a design focus on the ability to easily chat with other team members. The communication is automatically stored and associated with projects or individual data entries in a way that it can be searched and retrieved easily. Like the smart pins, we are putting this prototype into the hands of working researchers and getting feedback. We're still in the early stages of these tests. Through our continued interviews, we have found several promising areas that qualify as burning needs for researchers, which also dovetail with data organization. The entire grant process, from applying to delivering results, could benefit from better software tools. We also found scientists spent a lot of time trying to turn their data into presentations and would benefit from making this process easier and more integrated. Finally, good software tools haven't yet caught up with the growing role of data science and research, and there are opportunities to make the process of analyzing data on a single platform much easier and less time consuming. We feel these are promising directions for solving real day-to-day -day problems for scientists and plan on exploring them further. In the immediate future, we'll be following up on these leads, uh, on these possible must-have features to gain a group of researchers willing to use the software routinely. 
Now, this is a big problem space and not something that's likely to be solved by a single solution, but rather by a combination of improvements. We're still in the very early stages and at this point would benefit greatly just by talking to researchers and managers about their challenges surrounding using and sharing data. If you're interested in this problem, either from the big picture view or for solving day-to-day -day issues, come talk to us. Thank you. Great. I'll, I, I, my, my first, I have a few questions. My, my first one is, uh, what is the benefit? You, you, you pose the, the challenge as the Reinhard Rogoff paper and uh, the virtue of sharing data uh, for other researchers so they can, they can find it and test results and, and use it for their own research. Um, so what is the benefit above and beyond simply just tying grants to requirements that data is published in, in, in some standardized format or in some centralized location? What is the benefit to doing additional work on top um, to, so to address that particular challenge that you posed? Yeah, I mean, some of those requirements are already in place and they typically focus on the products of research. Um, but what we're aiming at is getting all of the objects associated with research from the, you know, the gel you run in the lab to the graph that you create um, part of this uh, system so that it's very easy for researchers to, to present everything as, as one package that you can go and, and look at later and say, oh, they did this step here, you know, even though that might not make it into the final paper. If you really need to know how to reproduce something, you can go and, and look at the source. And the set of resources that would be shared, uh, this is not possible with things like current commercial offerings like Evernote or other things that, that are available? Um, so what we think is that there needs to be a tool dedicated to uh, the types of data that researchers generate. I mean, Evernote is a great general purpose tool, but it's not something that people are using to store, you know, all of, all of these bits and pieces that are associated with research. So. Great. Thank you. And just in case uh, someone from ONC is listening in, I, I'd have to say that this is an interoperability issue, and it's part of our ONC roadmap on achieving a learning health system, which is helping not only researchers connect with each other, but connect their, their data um, towards clinicians to help it be used better. So it's a, it's a huge problem, um, and it's really important that we achieve this in order to make research cycle times in healthcare much lower. So I appreciate what you guys are doing. I don't know if there's necessarily a funding ask here as your project, as it's it's such high in scope that you're really, I think, almost just doing mine share. Yeah, we're movement. really hoping this will be a, a, a private-public partnership um, from the, the rolling out of smart pens to a larger test, trying to partner with those smart pen manufacturers to you know, working with groups like uh, Little Loops that are trying to, to approach this question uh, from the private sector. Are there any uh, um, uh, organizations developing any standards around how people um, share some of this data or maybe model some of the research data? I'm sure it doesn't extend to all of the data, which is probably right. highly amorphous. Yeah, that, absolutely, and it's, it's very fragmented. You know, it, it, people tend to focus on their particular area of interest and not look at ways to connect it to a larger ecosystem of, of standards, so that's, that would definitely be something to approach from the organizational level, the NIH or someone like that, is to say, how can we create a common set of standards for sharing data? Great, thank you. So I'll just start by uh, complimenting you on your customer discovery journey. I think out of all the teams, you had sometimes some more, some more uh, challenging, uh, uh, bigger challenges of trying to really dig in for insights uh, from where you originally started, which is just a pen base. So I think that's really cool. Also, I also want to compliment you as, using your final presentation time to solicit more interviews. I think that's fantastic. Um, over the course of your, your, your customer discovery, just curious, what, what, were there any sort of uh, big ahas or, or, or oh crap moments and, or, or that kind of lead to, hey, here's particularly one area where we might be particularly suited, uh, you know, sort of, I mean, you listed uh, some general areas that you want to focus on. But yeah, I mean, too many to, to list in this short time. Um, I think, um, the, the journey from figuring, thinking smart pens were the answer to thinking, oh, nobody wants to use these, to actually putting them in people's hands and finding out, you know, one person said, this is everything I've ever wanted. So that was kind of a roller coaster. Um, and talking to, to people uh, that have really specific needs um, or, or needs around, you know, like Dylan was saying, present, doing better presentations, doing, managing the grant process. And it, it just kind of opened up more questions and opportunities than actually leading us to one particular solution. So your, your, your last ask, uh, or your ask, was for 
conversations or questions. Is Basically, there anything yeah. else that you yeah. guys are looking for? I mean, the, my goal um, approaching this as a scientist was to try and get smart pens in the hands of more users. But you know, I've, I've actually talked to people at the NIH, and, and they're really excited about this. And, and so the ask has kind of already been made, and, and they've at least made a soft commitment to a larger test of this. So. Great. Any other questions, guys? No? Nope. All right. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.